America. Welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor. I'm Trevor Page. Thanks for joining us on yet another episode. We have lots of neat stuff to talk about this week. Exactly. We're tr- as you can see that this show is only out a couple of weeks after our last one, so uh, we're trying to pick up the frequency of these shows. That's right. You asked, can, so. so we're trying to deliver. <laughs> All right, let's get right, get right into news and updates then. Let's talk about the global EV sales because obviously we're tracking now EV sales a lot uh, a lot tighter uh, from, a, from a worldwide perspective. Global numbers tend to come out a little bit later than North, North American ones, just from a reporting standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're looking at Q1 of this year from a global perspective. And of course, Tesla being the number one plug-in brand in the world at just shy of 30,000 units delivered in uh, the first quarter. We expect that number to climb drastically in the coming quarters as the Model 3 starts making its round specifically in North America. Uh, for number two, we don't talk about China a lot, but China certainly is is a, you know, we could do a full hour show just on China every week <laughs> yeah. and not make a dent in that. But BYD was number two at just over 28,000 units for Q1. And then BMW, surprising, holds the third spot. Um, and I think that's because the i3 is, is still a very popular brand in, more in, in Europe. Europe yeah. In Europe. So um, you were saying off camera that you think that those numbers might start declining a bit. Um, well, given number four now models is, come up. You know, yeah, yeah, well, we got Nissan in the fourth position mm-hmm. at uh, just over twenty two thousand, but I think those two numbers are going to reverse once yep. the, uh, the the new leaf starts ramping up for That's sure. Exactly, and number five being BAIC, another Chinese brand, uh, at just over twenty one thousand. It's interesting to see two Chinese brands on the global sales, so that's an increasing market. So. It'll be very interesting once Tesla actually gets into that market now that the Chinese government has opened up ownership now, full ownership, because that was always a sticking point. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Let's. So now we talked about global. Let's talk about the U.S. scorecard. And it's a new month. We're into May now. And, uh, of course, uh, we track the Inside EV scorecard that they so nicely put together. It's great that they do that. And uh, not surprisingly, the number one EV for the U.S. for the month of April was the Model 3. Uh, and they pretty well stayed par at the number of deliveries from March to April. Slight slight increase at about 3,875 for April. So they seem to uh, have got those stuff together. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Model 3 uh, in a few minutes. But right now we want to go through some numbers. So that puts them at, for the year so far, uh, just around twelve over 12,000 units. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not trying to remember, is that on track for what most people were thinking for this time, or are they still a little off pace? Well, they're still a little bit behind, but the uh, the, the production ramp of the Model 3 is fast increasing. Mm-hmm. I and mean, we just had the financial call yesterday, and the numbers are looking really good. So it's, it's delayed, of course, we know this. Um, but it looks like they've solved most of the issues now, so they just have a couple of little things that they're going to be fine-tuning, and the uh, production rate's going to increase. So I think by the end of this year, we're going to see some very serious numbers out of Tesla. For sure, yeah. There's, there's no doubt that they're going to be the number one plug-in. Oh yeah, uh, EV vendor. Well, uh, Model in, Three in globally, is Model so. Three is mm-hmm. on the cusp of being yeah. absolutely the best-selling um, mm-hmm. uh, entry-level mid-size sedan thing um, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly by June, you, uh, it'll be very apparent. And then Model S, uh, the Bolt EV, the Model X, rounding out the top five, and then we've got the Leaf there. Uh, with a little less numbers than last month, that's because I'm understanding they're they're still trying to crank up production. Yeah, all so the focus is on Model backlog. 3. Yeah, yep. so they said mm-hmm. that they were going to delay some of the deliveries on the S and yep. X more towards the mm, end of the second quarter, third quarter. Mm-hmm. No, th- sometime in the third quarter, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. um, because they're they're super focused on Model 3. So. Yep, and then BMW and then some others. So yep. everybody kind of below, you know, the thousand mark is is not really pushing too much. So, uh, but let's hope they continue to ramp up. No numbers yet for Hyundai, but hopefully they'll start increasing. I think mm-hmm. the Ionic is still a little challenge to find yeah. in some markets. Yeah, I have seen a few of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice yeah, car, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we certainly need more of them. So absolutely. So let's get into the world of charging because there's uh, all you know. If we people are buying. Uh, battery electric vehicles they need places to charge and that's one of the the number one questions we get from uh from comments and and uh, reach outs is about uh, questions about charging so abb in europe has launched the fastest charger uh, i know we talked about this i think earlier this year or late last year about it coming out now it's it's launched it's in germany at the hanover messe location it's a 350 kilowatt tera hp high power ultra fast charger it can say replenish. that five times fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, don't. Just just repeat what I just said. All first. right. Uh, it can replenish 200 kilometers of 125 miles of range in eight minutes. Um, and they said at 40 or 45 kilowatt hour. I'm not sure if that's, or that would be that much, I guess. At 40 or 45 at, yeah. kilowatt. Hmm. Um, no, I think that's how much it would 
give back, right? 125 oh, miles would be right. 45 kilowatt of battery, kilowatt okay. hours of battery. Yeah, all right. I think that's how I read the numbers. Okay. It's got two plugs in it, CCS combo and a Chatamo for now, since it's in Europe, and it charges both at 400 volts and 800 volt cars. And we know that I think Porsche is going to be 800. The Mission E will be 800 e. volt. Most of the other cars Some are anywhere from 350 to 400. Well, 400, and the Teslas yeah. anyway. So. Right, right. So good. I mean, this is the technology that only, what, a year and a half, you know, we were talking about that's out, you know, out in the future. We knew that uh, chargers were going to become faster as we move towards that gas station-like experience of a shorter time. And, uh, hey, you know, to get uh, 125 miles in eight minutes, that's pretty fast. So, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. almost a uh, gas and continuing on with chargers, let's get talking about Target. They're going to um, equip 100 U.S. locations within two years with more chargers, about 600 stalls, if wow. the, the math holds up, or over 600 stalls. Now, they're partnering with ChargePoint in the U.S. and with Tesla, surprisingly. So they're going to have a combination of uh, the Electrify America ultra-fast chargers and Tesla superchargers in uh, 100 locations in the U.S., in the next two years. Um, they've already got some, uh, my understanding, in about five states. They have 18 sites already. So mm -hmm. if you have experienced a, a Target charger, uh, either in a Tesla or a non-Tesla vehicle, uh, let us know. Send us a, an email or, or a comment on how your experience was. And again, these are partnerships that uh, increase the, the whole Electrify America push that's going on in the U.S. So uh, good. So we're going to see you know, more. You could do your shopping and plug it in. Mm -hmm. That's where people go, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, this this piece on the city of Pittsburgh I found was a little unique. Uh, that's why I pulled it into the show for this edition. Um, they've rolled out five new uh, EV chargers, and the significance of these is that they're all solar powered, so they're completely portable and standalone, self-contained units. Uh, and now the city of Pittsburgh is using it primarily for their own fleet, uh, for some of the EVs that they have. Uh, each unit can provide about 225 miles of range power. Uh, when they're fully charged from solar and uh, they can also be deployed in emergency power situations so i thought that that was pretty unique um and we might start seeing more of these crop up mm -hmm. i i i know um wasn't isn't tesla putting charger uh, solar into their they have put solar right. panels on some of their locations does kettleman have solar or a... yes kettleman yeah. does mm -hmm. have solar um panels um you know tesla did say a number of years ago when they first deployed it that eventually they would do solar on all of their right. units but yet that's yet to really materialize mm -hmm. so i i don't know what the plans are uh, you know whether they're going to continue with that mm -hmm. um but it seems to be some of the larger locations in the sunnier states and stuff mm -hmm. are probably what do you call it? A, like a test bed mm. to see yep. how it kind of works out. Kettleman being fairly unique in that situation mm -hmm. at the moment because it is the largest installation. So we'll, we'll see. And but, is the um, solar from a Tesla perspective, is that used to power the actual, you know, the, the not the charging station, the superchargers themselves, but all the amenities around that? Like the actual, you know, you go inside that's the a good building question. and... Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I, I don't know mm -hmm. what the deal is with Kettleman. Mm -hmm. Um and, and honestly, I haven't really looked into it. Right. I haven't, obviously, I haven't visited it either. Yeah. So I don't know whether they have some power packs. Road trip. Site. Road trip. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, well, maybe. Who knows, who knows right? Yeah. So anyway, so uh, we'll leave it at that. And yeah. we find out more information, we'll discuss it. In a cool technology. Yeah. Good to see. And good for you, City of Pittsburgh, that yeah. you uh, implemented something. There was an announcement for us Canadians from Flow um, that they're going to pull about 100 new curbside stations. And these are really for urban destinations. So... You know, we, we know that there's a lot of people that ha live in condominiums that don't have chargers today, and they're That's concerned about where they can charge. Uh, and we see more and more cities looking at urban curbside chargers. So these are either either they pu they put up separate, they look like light poles with they're just small charging units, or they tap into light poles. Something, some some f similar sequences there. I think uh, London's doing that from a from a light pole perspective. Uh, but these are going to be 100 new stations. Each can charge two EVs at once, and they're going to start in L in Ontario here in London. Kitchener, Waterloo, and Cambridge. They're going to go to Alberta and Edmonton and uh, in BC through Vancouver and Surrey areas. Uh, so this is another new, 100 new stations by Flow Canada. I'm very excited about Flow. I had a good chance to meet some yeah. of the folks there and uh, they're going places. So good for them. Looking and, forward to seeing a lot of And they're of a Canadian company, yeah, which is nice. They to, are. Yeah. yeah, out of Quebec. If I had a flag in my hand, maybe you can <laughs> Photoshop a flag. I'll put a flag behind us. There you go. We'll put a flag <laughs> good enough. Us. All right, let's move in some manufacturer updates. Let's start, of course, with the Tesla Model 3. The earnings call came out, and uh, as you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of positive information about the ramp-up. 
that um, reservations have still exceeded the 450,000 mark. Uh, Q1 deliveries were over 8,000 at 8,180. Um, that's Q1 Tesla, yes. right? so not Q1 yes. calendar. Yeah. Uh, they're quoting now production ramp of uh, 2,270 units per week, roughly. And Elon, I think, said that he hopes to get to 5,000 per week within the next couple of months. So let's say July yeah. is the target. Um, and then at that point, they are going to roll out the all-wheel drive and the standard range trims. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen in July. It just means that shortly afterwards at some point. You have time. to be careful with Tesla because yep. <laughs> what they say, say is not always what they do. It's just basically whenever they give a time frame, it's what they think is possible. So always take it with a big lump of salt. So just be prepared. But it's encouraging to mm -hmm. see that uh, the ramp is, is finally, uh, bottlenecks yep. have, have finally opened up. And uh, I know a lot of people are waiting for all-wheel drive. Uh, standard range trim mm -hmm. would be awesome. That's what we're looking for. So, yeah. Um, did want to mention something, though, because we happen to have the picture here mm -hmm. behind us. Yep. It seems to be a little bit of a trend here lately that we've been noticing. I've been getting some reports of it, specifically on the Model 3, um, some of the white cars, that there seems to be some discoloration specifically in the rear bumper. I've got a handful of these reports. Um, I don't know exactly what the cause of the issue is. I'm not a paint expert. Mm -hmm. But from what I can understand, and I have seen it on other cars too, it's not unique to Tesla, Correct. but it could be related to uh, the clear coat. And I don't know 100%. Now, I'm pretty sure Tesla is aware of the situation. So just want to caution for you, if, uh, if you're expecting a Model 3 uh, delivery and you have ordered the white, please make sure that you view the car in direct sunlight. In the delivery centers, they have artificial lighting. Mm -hmm. You yeah, may not see point. it specifically. So if you can and you're taking delivery of Model 3, make sure you take uh, the car outside, inspect it in the direct sunlight, and look for any discoloration. If there's any issues, just bring it up with Tesla. They'll make it right for you. Just want to bring this in attention. It doesn't seem to be... I haven't had any reports on any of the other colors. It seems okay. to be specific to the white. My Lincoln had this problem too, but that it's... Uh, you know, it is what it is. So, so uh, yeah. Just is it something at the there. factory thing, like an oxidization or something? Well, like, like I said, it's and, just you know, there, there's been a lot of clear coat. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a lot of discussion mm -hmm. online. Some people say, well, you know, the cars are painted at the factory. Maybe there's a subcontractor that does the paint for them on the bumpers. Maybe mm -hmm. the, the batches mm -hmm. are different. I don't really know. My understanding is that Tesla does all of their paint in house in their own. That's what I thought too. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. in their own facility. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it could be paint. It could be clear coat. I'm leaning more okay. towards clear coat, but I'm not a battery. I'm not battery i'm not a paint expert so don't quote me on that i know you I are just, a semi-battery expert yeah. <laughs> well i'm not an expert i'm an enthusiast the enthusiast There's a difference right that's right there anyways just want to put that out there so just be cautious about that all right and of course more invites are going out to non-tesla owners now uh in and we're hearing uh potential canadian first deliveries to happen next month in june yeah early june yeah so we started getting some reports um you know i had some internally and then it was finally um officially uh, not announced but told to some of the reservation holders because the um, uh, Tesla stores have been starting to call um, owners to expect their cars in early June. Uh, mm -hmm. Tesla did say that, um, where I found out that they have leased the International Center here in the Toronto area. Mm -hmm. That's where I picked up my Model yeah, you X. you did your video, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, they they can't do the deliveries in their small facilities. No. There's just too many cars. So mm -hmm. the, yeah, so they've leased the International Center again. So that will be the primary location where their deliveries are happening. For starting June? in early June. Early June. Yeah. There you go. So. And there may be people skulking around there to see what they can see. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. All right. So Tesla's doing well. Um, Audi is back in the news a little bit. They released some more e-tron details. Uh, we talked about it in our last show. Um, there, it's going to be coming capable of handling 22 kilowatt charging. Uh, and it's going to come with about a 400 kilometer range or 248 miles. And that's WLTP standards. Uh, it'll come with a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, p pumping out 435 horsepower through its motor and uh, around estimated price of about 100,000 US, I believe, available in sometime in 2019. So they are cooking it up as well at Audi. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Hopefully we can get our hands on one maybe by the end of the year or I early. think we'll see an I-Pace before we see the Audi. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I, we're really hoping to get an I-Pace. And Volkswagen's back in the news, um, mainly because of the e-golf. And, you know, we talked about this on many shows, and I think we're, we can proudly say that we kind of predicted this, but <laughs> uh, VW announced no more e-golf. They're not going to produce anymore. They throttled down e-golf production in Germany, and they're pushing uh, EU people because it's really popular in, in Europe. I mean, uh, we both commented that we tried to look for one here and uh, mm -hmm. none to be found. Yeah. But in Europe, they're going crazy with those things. 
But VW is now pushing pers prospective buyers to get the 48 volt Golf Hybrid. And uh, for pure EV enthusiasts, though, they're going to have to wait for the ID lineup. The first model should be coming in late 2019, so it's going to be well over a year from now. And uh, we had heard, I mean, I know I had heard a few reports about just uh, that the e-Golf was kind of a stopgap measure. It wasn't really profitable for Volkswagen. In, in ca some cases, they may have been losing money on it. I don't know. But certainly there were low margins um, and it didn't make... Uh, for low volume equals low margins. Yes. Yeah. There you go. It's all economies of scale. Yeah, well, yeah. We've heard that a few times. Yeah, uh -huh. So, of course, uh, there's been an, a leaked image of what that first ID will look like based on, on the Golf Size platform. Uh, it should be called the Neo, and here's a picture of what it could be. It's very close to what they did with the prototype. Of course, we haven't seen the interior yet, right. so don't expect uh, you know that to look the same. But I'm glad that they kept the overall look and the shape. It's got some, you know, it's got some golf looks on there. The golf is nothing wrong with that. I like the golf a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, maybe my wife might want, want this. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> and if they keep to, to the, the dynamics that they, uh, that they build their cars with, uh, it should drive really well. Oh yeah. yeah. It should handle really well and, and be fun Looking to forward drive, to driving so. that car. Yeah. BMW uh, debuted the iX3. Um, it's going to have just a little over 70 kilowatt hour battery pack, 250 ish mile range, 400 kilometers. Again, WLTP standards, 270 horsepower, and it'll be ultra fast charging capable. Those no are the other specs. details. No other details. No pricing, but I think you can you you can look at the X3s and extrapolate some sort of uh, parallel pricing. Yeah, I it's believe, good that they're getting that, into so. the crossover market because guess where all the sales are. There you go. <laughs> Where's the margins? Yeah. <laughs> SUVs, yeah. crossovers. Mm -hmm. uh, Nissan, uh, I'm not sure if we talked about this before, but they have their uh, their other full electric vehicle is the ENV200. And it's pretty big in Europe and Japan. I don't know if it's available in North America, the no. actual electric version yet. Certainly the gas version is. Uh, but they've launched it with a new 40, watt, 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. And it's not exactly the same as the, the Leaf battery pack for the, for the 40 kilowatt hour pack. It's slightly different because it, it is using active thermal management. And there's a lot of discussion about why uh -huh. it is. That's because it's primarily going to see a lot more charge cycles because it's a commercial use type of vehicle. So you'll be charging a lot more frequently um uh, because of the use for that so that's why they've uh, they've put in active thermal management has about a 200 kilometer range 125 miles or so wltp standards uh, pretty popular james and kate just did one uh, a review of one and uh, uh check it out if you're interested in knowing more about that mm -hmm. All right, staying on Nissan, uh, the European New Car Assessment Program, or NCAP as they're called, released some crash testing uh, results on the new Nissan LEAF, and it scored a five-star rating. Uh, it's pretty neat. I encourage you to watch the video. You might have some of it scrolling behind us, and then we can certainly put a link in the show notes. But uh, it's a new standard that uh, Europeans have come out with, and the LEAF is the first to get this type of testing parameters associated with it for, for crash testing. Uh, what's neat about it is it's not just your standard side, frontal, offset, pull, all those kind of stuff that we see here in North America, but also involves external sources like uh, avoiding pedestrians, avoiding cyclists, um, and some other results. So it's pretty pretty neat that uh, uh, it did all those tests and it passed pretty well. So that's that bodes well for the Model 3 because we know that Elon has said that he's going to have the Model 3 as a five-star uh, safe vehicle, crash mm -hmm. safe vehicle. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting to see when we, you don't think we're going to start seeing some video on the Model 3 for a bit yet? Well, crash just testing, based yeah. on history, I mean, the last time they released information was on the Model X and that took almost two years for, the, for that information to come out. So there seems to be some kind of delay. Um, who knows with the Model 3, but I, you know, when they say they expect to get five-star crash rating, of course, that's the NHTSA standards, yep. not the insurance board one, but... Uh, Which are slightly different. Yeah, they're, they're different. Right? They're actually the more rigorous than the uh, NHTSA one, but I, I fully expect it to, mm -hmm. to get the five-star rating, so... Now, Mercedes-Benz, we haven't talked a lot about them, but the, the smart car, it's been available as an electric for quite a while um, here in, in North America. Um, and Mercedes-Benz has chosen to now eliminate all their ICE versions of the smart car in Europe. So anything outside of North America will be all electric versions only. So I think they're, I think they're selling well from what I hear. I know we had a friend who, has, who had one. He just changed. The uh, EV Discovery but, Center mm -hmm. here in Toronto has one. one. Mm -hmm. uh, really not. I actually got a chance to sit in it. Uh, what was it? Did two, you take, two, a, take two one out? Pretty, no, you know what? I was, little cars, right? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I did watch people come back and yeah. they had smiles on their face. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm going to assume that it was a fun sure. car to drive. Yeah. So the, the, the phase out to, to all electric only of the versions of the smart for uh, Europe and globally outside of North America will start in 2020. Mm -hmm. So uh, stay tuned for that. So if you're interested in, in a small, really good uh, city car, battery car, the smart's a great alternative. Mm -hmm. 
Let's get the mailbag. That's oh, really mailbag. it for the news. There was, uh, we covered a lot on the last show as well. So we have one mail. Uh, we appreciate um, all emails and comments that come in. And, and again, don't forget, if you want to leave a recording or do a video, you can send that in as well, a voice yep, or a video. Absolutely. We'll take that and we'll put you on the show and make you a star. <laughs> uh, so there's a uh, email from Florian. Thanks for the shows. Um, he's asking about used cars to find some good prices. You know, a 2016 Eagle for a Mercedes B-Class electric. Um, so he's trying to really look at which one to get. And most of them are in the same type of battery range and format. So his criteria seems to be doesn't really need long trips. Looking for something more of this, the short to mid range. Uh, looking at the used car fleet from a, a battery electric vehicle perspective and not really looking interested in the i3 but um you know kicking around like the mercedes is good doesn't have dc fast charging though the e-golf is a solid car but you know what do you think so he's asking for some opinions here and well i'm gonna assume mm -hmm. he's in europe because he mentioned some of the you know b-class and mm -hmm. stuff which are you know um uh, Vienna, sorry, Vienna, Austria. There. Oh, you go. there you go. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I just read that. Try to make a point of telling us where you're yeah, from. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Um, I know the early versions of the uh, Mercedes B class was uh, Tesla power powertrain and battery packs, mm -hmm. so you're safe on that perspective. Um, what did what year did that stop? Oh well, gosh, now idea? you're uh, you're throwing like, me for a loop now, right. so I don't really know. Um, yeah. Don't know, but you can you <laughs> can know. you can research that and figure it. Um, out. I yeah. I used to have the gas version of the B class, oh, okay. so, so I know yeah. what the car is capable of uh -huh. and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's certainly. I mean, if you're looking for something a little larger than than, than say a sedan, because it's you know it's a it's a car, but it's got a little more interior space. That's one to look at. I would say you know look at a, a used uh, um, e golf if you can. Um, you know, Nissan Leaf, of course, because there's lots of those around lots and uh, those. they're fairly affordable in the mm -hmm. used market. So mm -hmm. it's hard to say. I mean, it, you know, you, yeah, you're putting the i3 aside. I get that. Um, but yeah, those are probably, I mean, in the used market, because there's not as, like, there's a lot more new cars available on the market to yeah. choose from. But on the, on the older market right now, you're kind of limited. Yep. So yeah, it's hard for me to answer the question, but I would say probably look at the e golf, um, yeah, the B class if you can find it. If if rapid charging is, is yeah. of interest to you and it's important, yeah, try to find something that has a rapid that uh, CCS that. or or Chatamo on it. Chatamo, of course, is going to be the standard on the Leaf. So mm -hmm. it's a great question though because there are a lot, a lot of people that are interested now with all the you know shows like ours and, and all the other shows that are out there promoting EVs and and looking at the hockey stick that we're seeing the momentum in the EV market happen. More and more people are starting to take attention and maybe they don't want to get into a new EV. They want to try something on the cheap and get something used. You can get some, as you mentioned, some really good deals on used Leafs or other uh, older models of, of uh, EVs that are out there. And that's a great stepping stone. Try something with a plug and, uh, you know, look at what you can get away with. Maybe a smart if it's just yourself in the city, you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in the city. Um, some great deals going on. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. I mean, do look at used Model S. There's a lot of them yeah, out there. True. And I don't know where you're, I mean, in Vienna might be a different situation. But uh, don't discount looking at that too. You might mm -hmm. run across a, a better deal on a, on a longer yeah. range. Sixties are a little hard to find, but they uh, yeah. they're still out there. But you know mm -hmm. they're not unicorns. You can yeah. you can find a few of them. Yeah. Um, so don't don't forget to look at that too. It might be out of your price range. I don't know, but uh, yeah. but uh, great question. And the used EV market is a very viable option for people that want to get their feet wet and exper you know experiment. Sure. Maybe it's a second car or you're not too worried about range tripping so much. So mm -hmm. uh, good question. Thank you very much for sending that in. Appreciate it. Well, that takes us to the end of this show, um, you know, because we're doing a bit more frequent. We may not have, we're going to try to keep these a little shorter. Uh, of course, you can always email us questions, comments. Uh, you want to get something off your chest, please send it to us at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. And you can follow our Twitter account as at evrevshow. That's mm -hmm. E-V-R-E-V-S-H-O-W on Twitter. And, uh, you know, if you're into the Model 3, don't check, uh, check out the uh, model3ownersclub.com mm -hmm. uh, website. And uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've created this channel specifically to, uh, to for this show. It's not the Model 3 Owners Club channel. That's something different, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so I highly encourage you to uh, click and uh, make sure you subscribe because it gets the subscriber count up. Because yeah, when please, you start yeah. over from scratch, you can't bring all the subscribers over. So please uh, subscribe to the channel. YouTube has their funny rules. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon uh, webpage at patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. That's what pays for all the equipment and the show the time really big help yeah. yeah it's a really big help and we want to uh, say a big thank you to all of our patreon supporters because they are the ones that make this possible they do thank you very much and thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next issue because this one's in the can yep sounds good see all you right. in the next bye, -bye. One.